All right, hello everyone. I'm still working on the um, the Iliara campaign, which is my if you if you don't know already, it's my epic tunnels and trolls solo campaign. And I've been playing around with this. Uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of this Kent David Kelly guy. He's like right up my alley. So I've got a um, I printed out some hex paper. <laughs> I think it works. I think it works. And I've been going through his steps here. Now, I've, I've done this before, but when I did this before, I was like in junior high or high school, I think. I must have been in the ninth or 10th grade. And that's when I built my last like full world came campaign. And it was called Edoria was the old one. And I like Iliara as my new campaign. All right, so basically we're, we're, we're completing the major, where is it? The major landforms and shorelines. Can you see this down here? So uh, I've actually, I used uh, washi tape. I printed out these four sheets of graph or hex paper from something I found online that was free. And um, let's see. He basically suggests two options. One is just to do one big continent. The other option is to do uh, two continents with one being familiar and one being exotic. And I, like one's bigger and one's smaller. Um, in the uh, traditional Tunnels and Trolls terms, this might be Troll World plus Zimrala. Zimrala is kind of like their exotic thing now. It's uh, it's really monsters, monsters. And I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm a little shy to ask... Ken St. Andre, if you would rather us only talk about Monsters, Monsters from now on, because uh, after the um, passing of Rick Loomis, um, I think the rights of Tunnels and Trolls have gone to this other guy. And I don't know the other guy. I don't know if he's a good guy. I don't know if he's a bad guy. He might be a great guy. I have no idea. Okay. So where are we on? Step five. Complete the major for uh, landforms and shorelines. Okay. And he just says, you know, basically... Now, I've, I've drawn maps before. And he says, when in doubt, put in a huge amount of land as opposed to water, because most adventures take place on land. And uh, he suggests if you do the one big continent, you're going to do some islands. I kind of want to do a couple of... Um, a couple of large islands. I've always uh, liked doing an island full of dinosaurs. Like that's the dinosaur land. But let's do the um, let's do that. We'll put a. The land over there. And there might be little tiny islands too, like little small islands. Um, maybe a distant island out here. Um, maybe a little one over here. It's mostly land, right? That's, that's, it's a game world. It's not meant to be like a scientifically accurate world. Okay. And, um, then, uh, now he suggests coloring, but I'm not going to be coloring anything just yet. I mean, that's a tough thing. Okay. Um, yeah, it says remember to take the back sides together. That's what I did. You can hang it up if you want. Eventually, maybe we might. It says scale back your ambitions. I will say to that to reduce psychic casualties as we approach our own reflections of Ryla. Um, keep your own design goals reasonable and diminish your focus. So that's why I did four pieces rather than like they have suggestions for a nine sector map or a six sector map. Uh, I just went for these four. Um, and you can even put, you know, here there be dragons on the corners. I get that. Um, let's see. Oh, each one of these hexes. Okay, so let's first of all, let's make a little, um, compass rose. North. There we go. West, east. South. And this might not be the whole globe. There could be, you know, more globe that's un unexplored or undiscovered, right? Because, you know, this is, maybe this island is as far as people have traveled, or this island right here. Um, something like that. 
I'm really interested in, by the way, one of my other hobbies is I'm really interested in learning to sail. So that's kind of an interest for me as well, like to play into stuff like this. Sailing has been a, um, like a big thing in my family history. Uh, my dad even owned a, um, a sailboat dealership at one point, or he's partial owner of one with his brother. And my cousin was really into sailing as well. I think it's just something that we always had in our family. I love sailing. Um, all right. Okay, it's giving you words of warning. All right. A good map is an interesting terrain barrier right in the middle of it. I'm going to put it right here. And classically, this is a large inland sea with all the major kingdoms surrounding it on every side. Uh, okay. How do we do an inland sea? Um, usually it's like... Something like that. And I'm creating some... Rivers. I know like the... For example... As a for example, you know, like the Mississippi River goes really far in the United States. Or the Nile, or the Amazon. Is the Amazon the longest river in the world? Something like that. Okay. I hope this is all getting caught on camera because I can't actually see my own camera. <laughs> Alright, look at good looks at the mix of land shape, which is evident in the shorelines that you've already drawn. Uh, any unusual features or places where land and sea are striated will come to mean that some of the more narrow kingdoms, more prominent isthmus, will have an extreme strategic importance. Yeah, like, um, like a kingdom that's over here is probably pretty safe, right? You know? So putting in some major rivers. I don't know if he's gotten to the river step in this book yet, but I'm trying to follow the book kind of step by step. Um, not because I don't know how to do it, because but because I think it's fun to kind of follow a procedural... Um, a procedural procedure. What is this kingdom? Like out here. I've been thinking small, like, you know, when I created the world of, or the town of Ice Hollow, I just kind of said, oh, Ice Hollow, it's a thing. And, you know, Ice Hollow would be a little town on one of these hexes, and it would be just one, like, one of these hexes would be blown up to its own sheet of graph paper or hex paper, and that would be Ice Hollow. So, we're going from thinking small to thinking big. I hope. What about barrier reefs? Like in, in North Carolina, you ever seen the barrier reefs? Like Kill Devil Hills and uh, the Outer Banks are like these barrier reefs that they follow the coastline. You know, and there's even a bridge to get to them. But they're their own place. Okay. Oh, what if there's like a little... I'm not going to put anything in there. On the Inland Sea, we're going to leave it as it is. Okay. Okay. Oh, and he's saying, what about a place like the Panama Canal or the Suez Canal? That might be a good place right there. So this this area right here. You can also use a range of mountains filled with dangerous passes or a vast desert or a glacier, which has thaws, a circle of islands surrounding a great mainland, or even a spice-filled swamp, which turns into impassable quicksand every summer. 
Okay, this is going to be our our strategic barrier in the middle. But I think that we have the other strategic barriers, obviously this ocean area, this this ocean area here. And Maybe another river, like the land between the rivers, right? In that uh, Iraq, the Mesopotamian. Okay. So, the side on a hemisphere. <laughs> we're going to call it the Western Hemisphere. Um, the side on a temperature star. Okay, this, we're jumping ahead, but you know what? I Do I still need to put in... Ah, look at this. Okay, cold, subarctic, temperate, and subtropical, and it's basically saying, figure it out, dude. Okay, well, let's do that. Now, obviously, this could be doubled. Like, you could put cold on both ends, and then subarctic on both ends, uh, like that. So I think the majority should be temperate, right? Um, I'm going to use this green pencil right here, and we're going to use this to determine our, our regions, and the regions are going to be, um, let's call this, this region, temperate, okay? Put it on this on this edge right here. I don't know if you're supposed to write this right on your map. Um, and we'll call this subarctic. I played a lot of like Master of Magic, and this is totally how it works on that game. So let's do another green line. Eventually, I'll get a I'll whip up my colored pencils, of which I have many, and we'll make an even bigger map. I mean, I mean, we'll color it in nice. Full color. Um, this is subarctic. Arctic. And then this is cold. Or near Arctic. So if that's the temperate zone ending here, then this is subtropical. So we never quite get to so, to completely tropical. Let's say that this area, this whole remaining area is subtropical. All right, let's continue on. You have to emulate Earth, but to provide your players the most varied possible of future adventure supplements that you can. <laughs> Very good. All right, the future player is me. Unless somebody else wants to jump in, but it's fine. All right, the scale, uh, 24 miles, 24 miles per hex. Although 32 works as well. We're gonna go with, we're gonna write this down here. Equals 24 miles, no problem. If you choose any scale other than 24 miles, parts of the world creation process will become very laborious. Well, we don't want that, okay. Let's move on. Place a continental divide on each continent. I'm going to say this is a continent, and this is a continent, and this is an island. Um, basically, a continental divide is a line of huge mountains which subdivides the continent and determines which directions the world's rivers, despite their winding, will ultimately flow towards the seas. Uh, the easiest continental divides to map are either north-south or east-west. Okay. So, and it can sway from side to side, but it should traverse the entire continental region. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, you just told me to put the stupid sea in there. Does that mean the, like, I'm thinking a continental divide, the Grand Canyon, the Appalachian Mountains. Oh, here's real world examples. Include the Rocky Mountains of North America, running north-south, roughly into a western third and an eastern two-thirds. Okay. All right, so let's do that. We're going to say... These are our mountain range.
right? And then we're, let's say that this right range continues. down this way. It doesn't go all the way down, but it goes that far. And then on this one, like even Japan has Mount Fuji, right? So, all right. I don't know if this is catching all of this. I'm like, look, <laughs> we don't know what the, I have no idea what the camera is capturing any of this. All right. So, um, Carefully consider both your maps, Heartland and Terrain. Oh, you should have just told me that earlier. You don't want the Terrain Barrier to be part of your Continental Divide, because doing so will sever the Heartland into difficult to traverse. I just did that. Okay, well, okay, fine. Um, That's fine. We're... Do not run from east to west. I didn't do that. I went north to south. Traveling north to south. Get you different terrain and a similar... Climate. Oh, different tra climate. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah, man. We did that correct. Okay, mega rivers. Give each continent a mega river. I think this is our mega river here. This is this one. And to another degree, this one right here. Um, okay. Rivers begin in the mountains and end in the seas. Let's put a couple of more mountains here. So let's suggest that these mountains, so we know which way the river flows, right? Because there are these mountains. I probably should put another. Hey. Now it says, uh, put in some lesser mountain ranges. Look at the blank areas on your map and decide whether you want mountains there. I do want some mountains here. I think mountains should kind of follow the shoreline a bit sometimes. Minor. Minor mountain ranges. I mean, there's a whole big, big river out here. And there's another one right here. So mountains are big. Okay. Taking a look, I feel like this is pretty good. All right. It says, uh, mountains are a double-edged sword. They're the most difficult terrain your adventures will traverse and you'll always be considered when a journey is being planned. Okay, well, we did that. Okay. Rivers start in the mountains as a general rule, but will leave the mountains. They will uh, once they leave, they will not run through or into another mountain range. This is simply because water does not flow uphill. <laughs> so this is technically wrong. I wonder if I can. Um, what if I take this river? run it this way instead. Oh, that'd be better. Okay. We're still in the pencil stages. Okay. Um... Anyway. I know a couple of the other rules. Okay, once you got your mega rivers and mountain range established, I think that we've established that. Add some branches to the mega river. I think we've done a couple of branches. And now that we know which direction the rivers are flowing, we can be a little bit smarter about where it's going. That's going the wrong direction. That's going the... well, no, that's, that's starting there, so we know which direction it's going. Um... Let's see, how about a couple over here? When I was in um, middle school, I went to middle school in Texas. 
you had to memorize the rivers in Texas. That was part of the uh, curriculum. And I, I don't know if I can still do it, but it's the, you know, the, the Brazos, the Rio Grande, the Nacogdoches, the, like, like uh, the Colorado River. Like, you had to know all the rivers. All right. What's, I don't, you should add at least a dozen, and perhaps as many as two dozen other major rivers to your map. They will never touch the Mega River, but can be spread across your map with a fairly even distribution. Oh, I have, I've been building them off of the, um mega river so let's put some more let's put some more uh small rivers in it won't touch the mega river right i'm totally into that and in general that means they're small like you know And they don't go as far. I think one of the things it's about to tell us, and I'm not 100% sure, but I think I've learned this when I've done this previously, is you have to put all your civilizations along a river. All civilizations need a fresh water source. And that means a river. There's some definitely some areas in here and here and here and here that need rivers. All right, Kent David Kelly, you mad genius. I'm following your I'm following your lead here. river flowing into the sea there into our inland sea okay these rivers will never touch them but you can spread across with a fairly even okay any large areas without rivers will probably be deserts and narrow areas between two rivers will probably be swamps oh okay so it does kind of there is kind of a method to our madness and i don't know if i want a uh, a giant tundra up north here in the cold i mean it kind of makes sense that we would have that because what is a, a tundra but a desert? I was reading, you know, about... Um, I think it was the, it's the high desert. So there's desert in Oregon. The high desert. Isn't that crazy? I, I never thought of... I thought of Oregon as a giant forest, but it's actually got desert to it as well. When you think of desert, I think of, well, California, or Nevada, or Arizona. All right, we're good. Good to go, good to flow. Let's do one on this remote island as well. Maybe a couple air. What a natural harbor. Uh, another one here. All right. Cool. All right. You can always add more blah, blah, blah. Great Lakes. Put some freshwater Great Lakes in your to map away from the ter uh, terrain barrier. Um, okay. Typically not always be synonymous with multiple rivers and or mouths. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Right, let's let's put some lakes in. I'm gonna put a lake here and a lake here. Definitely put a lake here and a lake here. I think we would have a lake here. I'm a little weirded out because.
Will the lake flow into the sea? I mean, how does it work? All right, here's the Great Lakes area. Naturally, all of your own Great Lakes will have at least one sunken city or major dungeon deep within their depths. Sorry, we're, we're, we're not there yet. Oh, but it says pencil in some... <laughs> we're penciling... By pencil in, you mean pencil in the lakes. Okay, they can vary in theme from boiling to shallow to sargasso filled to seismic to frozen. Okay. Some of the lovely public domain art he likes to use. Ken David Kelly, he like he remax remastered all his his books once he discovered AI art, so they all have AI art all through them now. But he's really good at it. Let's see. Okay, divide your maps into regions with borders defined by the mountains and the rivers. Okay. Okay, basically we're pie slicing the kingdoms, I think. So Rectangles, uh, squares, and triangles of land, and basically we're looking for the natural areas uh, that would be conquered. Well, I would think that uh, there might be two kingdoms here. I'm going to do a dot dash. Dot dash. There's a kingdom. This is one kingdom. Maybe each one of these four things is its own kingdom, or maybe it's just all one kingdom. But I would think this region, surrounded by the lakes, would be a uh, um, kingdom. This region is another one. This looks like a real swampy region down here. This procedure is actually very fun because I don't feel overwhelmed by it. Um, at least not yet. Okay, how about this kingdom right here? This could be a kingdom. Then this is a kingdom. Like maybe these mountains over here, this whole mountainous area is a dwarven kingdom. This is the strategic area, this sort of isthmus, this sort of Panama, you know, connecting point. And like, let's say. It's like this region here. This is probably a region. It's got two rivers that almost meet. So we got all kinds of kingdoms being built. Um, I would put Maybe this is a kingdom down here. This is a kingdom from here to uh, right here. Like a small one. This area with the two lakes, the mountains, it's kind of like a valley almost. That one board game I have. I've got this one board game where you, um, you, oh, what is it called? It's like Risk, where you have these different fantasy races, like there's flying rat men, or, you know, um, I remember there's Amazons in it. Does anybody know what's from the board game I'm talking about? It's pretty cool. I think I have an on, like a, like an online version of it that I got. From my iPad. It's one of those European style. All right. 
so kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. This is, ah, oh, this has got to be its own kingdom right here. So this whole isthmus right here, this must be my lucky day. This whole isthmus is its own area. Why would this be a thing? Okay. I don't know how many kingdoms we're supposed to have, but I, it looks like I got a lot. You know, especially if I consider... One, two, three, maybe this is four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, or twenty-three. Might be twenty-five kingdoms. Okay. Political borders tend to be rare and in constant flux, while geographical borders are common and relatively fixed. In peacetime, rivers and China, mountains channel and inhibit migrations, but in war, they represent the insurmountable terrain when the fighting dies down, the bridge too far. Okay, absolutely. Political subdivision, that's what I just did, right? Uh, if, any, if any region is too large, consider dividing it into a, with a political border. Yeah, 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 we got plenty. Okay. The flow of the wilderness. Now that we've got all the world's maps regions have been roughly defined. Oh, you know what? I don't know if we put in... Do we put in everything else? Do we put in our swamps yet? Like... Like... Okay. Like, which parts are plains, which parts are forests? I think that, um, our forest, uh, would mostly be in this tr temperate and subtropical region. Like, we wouldn't put him... You could still have him in subarctic, because you could have pine forest, right? So... There's a forest. This is a desert. This is a boreal forest right here. I'm hoping that I remember how to do all this cycle. Like, like, how did I designate my forest? There's also the scrub terrain. Like, how do I decide which was scrub terrain? Um, I'm sure we'll figure it out. I've been reading Hawk and Moore. I think I've mentioned that about a zillion times at this point. But, um, like, when they designed the first um, Greyhawk map, they basically modeled it after where they lived. Like, part of it was modeled after Wisconsin. <laughs> and then, like, the Twin Cities. So, you know, it had similar lines. And then that's that's what ended up being Greyhawk. So, um, and it was really for the, um, the Wargaming Society. So, like, if you were in control of this territory or whatever... Um, and then some other um, player would have another control of another territory. You could decide to try and invade or, you know. Take over, or encroach, or, or whatever else. And they had this book which, which listed everybody's rank. Um, you know, who is a... Uh, Who 
who was an archbishop, you know, who was a <laughs> who was a baron or whatever, you know, and you had to like be constantly like trying to like you know I don't know if it was constantly trying to up upgrade your rank. This is going to be swamp in here. I like the idea of this whole area in between these rivers just being swamp. So my swamp is going to be I like to, to use this candy cane looking thing like it's a, a um, cattail. And I like the idea of putting my swamps in the subtropical area. So this area, totally a swamp. I guess my lines didn't line up perfectly. That's all right. Now, obviously, this could take a lot of time. So I don't know if we're going to go crazy with it. Don't go crazy. And a lot of it's not going to be real clear until and in, unless and until we get some color on this. Like, get out our colored pencils and, and do it. But let's just say we're going to you know, do a portion of this. Like, that's a kingdom right here. Okay. The swampy kingdom. And then like it hasn't told me to like where do we start putting okay listen oh okay i do recommend six subregions mountain swamp forest mountains hills do we we're doing mountains twice hills and forest mountain swamp forest mountains hills and forest Okay, well, flow, flow of the wilderness. Um, we've roughly defined everything. Let's do some numerical. Assign a number to each region. Give each and every land region, including your major islands, a unique number. Simply start with the, low, with the top left sector sheet. We should, you should have between 50 and 200 regions. Okay, that's fine. So I would say this is one and this is two. All right, maybe three. Four. Five. Six. This is a little tiny one. Let's put some hills in there. I haven't done much of the hills yet. The foothills. Um, seven. Let's call this eight. Let's just definitely put some hills in here. And even some forest. Nine. This has got to be its own. Ten. Hills, hills. This is where the gnomes live. Eleven. Let's see, this is eleven. I just realized I have so much stuff that is not detailed at all. This is going to be kind of a swampy area. Have you, has anyone ever played Daggerfall? Like, Daggerfall would totally be... <laughs> like, it's such a huge map. This is a lake. Alright. 
Where are we? 10, 11, this is going to be 12. Uh, am I going to get to 50? I don't know if I will. 13. I don't know if it's its own kingdom, but it's definitely... It's definitely got a pinch point right there. I don't know. 13. Let's do this kills. Oh, this was going to be a desert. 14. Let's say this is all desert. 15. 16. Let's say that this area is 17. I love this crazy little landlocked area. Uh, 18. 19. I'm not going to have, I'm just telling you right now, I'm not going to have 50, 21, 22, it's already kind of getting my imagination going, like I imagine this would be like, this is a, this kind of savage barbarian forest or something, I don't know, um, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, there's some hills. 29, 30. It's a subtropical island with a big forest on it. These islands are going to be volcanic islands. So they have little mountains on them, they're, but they're baby mountains. So that this will be 31 here. This area. This stretch of islands is 32. Oh, these little islands over here. Bay, 33. 34. That one's already done. Oh, there's no forest. There should be forest. Thirty-five? I think there's thirty-five right here. I know it's it's all swampy over here in this one. This is like a swampy island. I don't know if island's gonna have swamps. Alright, we didn't get fifty, but we got thirty-five. <laughs> this is desert up here. My uh sign for desert is a dot in the middle of the hex. And then the plains are the empties. Okay. Keep going until you're all your regions numbered. Depending on the size of your sector grid, you should have between 50 and 200. Well, I failed on that one. Look at your um, regions varying size of the political eye. Uh, figure out which ones are going to be the kingdoms. Okay. So small realms, medium sized realms, large realms, um, vast realms. So these, okay, the small realms are baronies, archbaronies, viscounties, and city-states. Um, controlled by the weakest numbers, while others are ruled by the powerful leader. So I've got some small countries here. For example, like, look at this little uh, 18 area right here. It's just this little area in between the mountains and the forests um, over here. Completely landlocked. 
that's probably a small realm. The medium-sized realms are the counties and the marches. The large realms are the duchies and principalities. And um, again, some are free and some are kingdom pieces. And then the vast realms. Oh, here. Some of these are vast just because there's nothing to... There's nothing there, man. 23. Well, yeah, I don't know. It kind of makes me want to fill in some more. Okay. In a four sector map, a vast realm is probably just a few inches across, but in a nine sector map, it might cover 12 inches of your paper, even more. Yeah, okay, all right, fine. <laughs> Prepare a regional summary sheet. And they give you an example. Do they have one in the back of this thing? Because I'll print it out. All right, let me print one of these out. I misunderstood. So here's what you need to do. I don't need um, this list of things that I, there's no form for it because I literally need to make an entry for every single one of my regions that I just detailed out. I don't know if you can see these better. Um, so my map's looking good and it says you are now, um, you have now completed the, your first draft poster map, poster map of the world. And you're going to begin writing the outline to the game booklet that goes with the map. Now, the good thing, the good news about this is, like, in the past when I would try and do these, I would try to write these epic histories. And um, I, would, I would get fizzled out and frustrated, and then I would give up on the on the game world. And it was like, okay, we're just going to run some... <laughs> we're going to abbreviate everything or whatever. I'll, or I'd make, like, one region map or something like that. So anyways... Um, Here's what he suggests. So basically, we're going to have uh, a column. Let me see if I can find my ruler. We're going to have an index column. And that's just the number, you know, like the number of the region. And it goes down like this. One, I'm going to put, I'm going to do double lines. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it makes sense that there wouldn't be... Um, uh, something that you could just print out because you would have to keep doing, you know, if he's saying between 50 and 200, you would need 50 and 200 lines. So 15, 16, let me get my other, do my line again. Not that I can't draw a straight line. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I think I have 35. How many did I head up with? I have at least 34. I'm going to... Oh, 35. I got 35 of these. And each one of these kind of is its own entity. So where did I get to? I ended on 30, so 31, 32, 33... 34, 35, okay. Now, the uh, columns at the top, there's just basically three of them. It helps if you hold the ruler still. Okay. Basically three columns. It's wild or civilized. Because there could be wild regions. Terrain. And I think that's the dominant terrain in the area, and then the realm type. Let's make that up. There's my little sign for the Iliara campaign. Wild or civilized. Really, we could just couldn't we just leave that to a uh, a single letter of W or C, or just type civilized and put a plus sign like if it is <laughs> check a check mark realm type possibly. All right, with room for later expansion, if indeed that is the case. But who knows if that will be the case. 
like I said, I, you know, I, I got super interested in Hawk and Moore and, you know, kind of re reading about how these dudes set up Greyhawk, but not just Greyhawk, but also Blackmore. And, you know, one of the um, interesting things about Blackmore is uh, that guy, I think his name is Griffith uh, or Griffin, the guy who did the Blackmore movie, The History of Blackmore. He's, he seems comparatively, I mean, he's got gray hair, but he's comparatively young. <laughs> like, like you know, Arneson's gone. I actually saw Arneson um, at Gen Con one year. I've seen uh, Gygax several times at Gen Con. And these were, these were they were quite old. Um, Dave McGarry, though, uh, you know, he's, he's older than I am, but he's not, you know, an ancient, um, an ancient man by any, by any, you know, by any stretch. Okay. Decide if each region is wilderness or civilized. And... Oh, and, and literally you give it a W or a C. And it says, uh, remember you should start with having most of the heartland areas designated as civilized, while many of the map edge areas as wilderness. Okay, makes sense to me. And they actually show an example of it. So let's go through our... Let's go our, through our, uh, our map real quick. My map is looking great, by the way. Thanks for asking. All right, where is areas one and two and three? Where did we begin this this nonsense? Oh, it's in the. Oh, I get it. It's out on the islands out here. So let me zoom in a little bit. So are those civilized? Um. Or are they wild? I think there might be some swamps here. I think there should be a kingdom on this area, but it's like... Or maybe there's just outposts. Let's call this whole thing wild. So we're going to say it's wild. So one, two, and three are wild. Four. Where did we put four? That's 35, okay. So four is up here, definitely wild. It's just completely barren. Okay. Five. I want five to be civilized. That's the first kingdom. Six. To tell you the truth, I kind of want that one to be civilized as well. I know it's on the edge. Seven is wild. Uh, eight, wild. Nine. Civilized. Well... Yeah, yeah. And there should be more to it. I mean, obviously I've got... I'll have to, I'll have to rework some of the coastline there. Where's 10? 10 is civilized. These are our core areas. 11 is civilized, for sure. So it looks like, uh, like human civilization kind of creeps up right around this sort of inland sea. I don't know if that can be seen right here. Let me move my... I gotta move the, uh... <laughs> Please, no. No break. Okay, we're right around this Inland Sea type area, and we're just marking these things out. Number 12 is civilized. Number 13 is civilized. That's the rule. That's the most strategic one. 14. This is where we could get a little wild, I think. 15. It's this area, that's, this is a wild area. And basically it's everything south of these mountains. All right. 
16. That's right here. That's civilized. 17. Down here. I kind of have a good sense of this one, even though it's on the far side. You know, maybe this this area is, has been built. Now let's, let's call this one wild, and I got a better idea. I'm going to call this one wild, but I'm going to call 18 civilized. Because I like the idea of this little kingdom right over here. Um, 19, that's definitely civilized. 20. This area with the lake is civilized. 21, civilized. 22, civilized. That's my elven kingdom, I think. It's either an elven kingdom or like an orc thing because it's all forest. It's like this big, it's like the Pomarge or something. Um, 23 needs more details. But it's definitely civilized because look at where it is. It's right along the river and the inland sea. Um, and generally plains area. So we're going to call that one civilized. 24. Let's push back a ways and it's... Oh, we're going to call that one wild. They all can't be civilized. 25. We're going to call that one wild too. 26. Wild. 27, wild. 28. It's this forest. I'm going to call it wild, but I think it should be like, there should be like an elven kingdom right over here. 29 is definitely wild. 30 is up here, definitely wild. Although there might be an outpost or, you know, something. Oh, you can't even see it. This is 30. Like, it's way over here. Alright. What is left? 31. Down here at the bottom. Wild. 32. I propose that this entire island chain all fall under one region. On a, and maybe that these should be all different things. Let's call this... Okay, let's do this. 36 and 37. Um, that gives us more regions. They're different islands. And, so it's, you know, if you want to imagine, like, if it were Hawaii, that would be like, you know, Maui would be one area, and then Honolulu or whatever would be, the, or the big Kauai? I don't know. There's different islands in Hawaii. Um, 32. These are all wild. And here's 35, all the way out on the edge. Definitely wild. 36 and 37, wild and wild. Not to say that there isn't anybody there. Okay. What's the next step? 